Hey guys, Savage Al here with Bambula A1. Today, we are going to have a step-by-step -step setup tutorial for Bambula A1. We are going to go over some of the heads of chicken leaves first, with a step-by-step -step setup guide and some basic slicer setting to get you started. If you are new to 3D printing, this video is made for you. Be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Let's get started. Before we do the open box, I want to go over some pretty simple chicken leaves first. Chicken leaves number one, firmware. A1 was introduced to the market on December 14, 2023. By the time this video was made, it was still new to the market. My A1 has updated twice in the first few days. I'm not sure which firmware version you are going to receive on your A1. That said, if you encounter some of a weird issue related to self calibration, automatic bat leveling, and some other working logic issue caused by the printer itself. Update to the latest firmware for the printer and your AMS light. It might be helped with those issues. But pay attention, if your printer runs perfectly fine right out of the box, be careful when you attempt to update your firmware. Bambula currently has closed a downgrade channel on the mobile app. Your firmware update might be irreversible. If your printer runs fine, if there is no major feature update on the new firmware, I would suggest leave it as it for now. Chicken list number two, extruder cable. A1 has the extruder cable connect on the game tray to the extruder head. If you don't pay attention on the orientation when you attach the wires to the PTFE tubes in a specific way, you might be end up seeing the cable caught by the game tray. It is really not a pleasure thing to see that happen. Watch carefully. You want to orientate the smallest hole of this clip to the front of the printer. I also made a simple design to help you clip other end of the wire to keep away from the gantry. Download link is on the description below. Chicken list number three, poop bean. You may already know this one, but I really think you should print a poop bean for your A1 after some basic functional test print. A1 will shoot poop all over the place. If you are getting those short beans, make sure you also get attachment on the perch area to prevent the poop from going outside of your bean range. I also add a build play guide piece on the back corner since I am having a hard time to align the build play on the printer bag. This little device is helping a lot. Chicken list number 4, X axis noise. You may encounter chatter noise every time your X axis is moving. This is common to see on both A1 and A1 mini. On linear rail, there are tiny balls moving around the rail block to provide smooth and low friction motion due to many reasons like torrenting, dirt, and lack of lubricant. Noise could occur. Generally, craning out the linear rail slot, adding some lubricant oil, and running to break it down a bit will help to reduce the noise or make the noise disappear. Chicken list number 5. Rubrication. Before you run in your printer, you should check the replicating conditions on your x-axis linear rail, y-axis linear rod and wheels, z-axis lead screw. If you have a bone dry condition on any of those, it is not good. Also, if you absorb a lot of dirt on those components, make sure you clean and re it. Also pay attention to using the correct type of replication. A1 comes with two types of loops. All your type of loop is for linear rail. It could help to make a linear rail runs better and reduce friction, also prevent rust occur, but exceed amount of oil will chop dirt more easily and cause balls to slip on the rail. So make sure you don't over rub it. The other type of rubricant is PTFE grease. My A1 comes with a grease on the Y axis, but my A1 mini menu suggests that to use oil type to loop the rail. PTFE grease is also for replicate the lead screw on the Z axis. Again, make sure you only apply thin layer on those components. Periodically inspection, cleaning, 
and rubricating aren't also necessary to keep your printer in good condition and happy. Checking list number six, no enclosure. This is a general information. Due to the lack of a cooling fan for the mainboard and PSU, putting A1 on enclosure space or putting it next to other heat source might cause problems to overheat your mainboard and step a motor. Also make sure your printer base is clean with airflow. Checking list number seven. Last but not least, don't hesitate to ask questions. If you encounter any issues, feel free to leave on the comment section below or join the A1 user group. Google and YouTube will help you as well. I also highly recommend to check out Bamboo Lab Wiki. There is a lot of information related to the assemble, maintenance, and common issues. You should also consider filling a ticket and get assistance from a Bamboo official if none of those resources could help you out with your issues. Hey there, there's nothing shame or feel bad about asking for help. We're all coming from a beginner at some point. Enough hats on information, let's get started setting out your printer. Even with this video instruction, I still highly recommend to read a manual come with your A1. You will get a lot of useful information and avoiding a lot of potential user errors. A1 come with mostly assembled. You are still required to do some simple work. It will take you around 20 minutes to an hour before you start your first print. You can get yourself a cup of coffee and stay awake. Bambula will randomly put some of a gift kit on this slot here. Unfortunately, I didn't get one. Guess who's a bad boy? There is complete part list in the first few page of the menu. I always suggest to check in all of them, confirm you don't have anything missing. The majority of the assembly work is attached a gantry to the base. First, you will need to remove four screw on the base highlight in orange. This will free your printer back. Place a base on the gantry as shown. Remove the white axis cover plate from the base. There are 10 screws on the rear half, two screws on the front half. You need to put those on the base. They are all highlighted in green. Make sure you remove a sticker on the aluminum before you put a screw stone. Place a gantry on the table as shown. Place a cable box into the slot first. Align a Type-C cable within the slot and push a cable in. There are three wires with a color coded on both wire and slot. Match your color and pull a cable in. Move the extruder head to the center of the x-axis. This is important. Attach your purge white part to the left of the x-axis. Put one screw on. There is a color code on the filament holder for AMS light. Make sure you match your color. There are two longer and two shorter PTFE tubes. Longer tubes go to the slot 3 and 4. Make sure you remove the plastic cover on the printer bed and wipe your build plate with isopropyl alcohol or wash with the soapy water.
When you first tone the printer, it will run some initial self-test by itself. Just be patient and follow the steps. You may encounter some error code during the self-testing process. It is a rare case, but I've seen some posts regarding that. Sometimes it will throw out error codes due to random reasons. Sometimes it might ask you to adjust the belt tensioning, or sometimes it might tell you bad mesh fail. I would suggest you to turn the printer off first and reboot it. Also, confirm your wire are not losing and connecting the right spot. You could also find a lot of useful information on Bamboo Light Wiki to help you troubleshooting the arrows. The initial setup will also ask you to download Bamboo Light Handy mobile app. If you want to use your phone to set up a print, you are required to log on to the mobile app. The entire self-calibration process might take somewhere around 10 to 15 minutes. When everything is done, it will tell you it is ready. I would suggest you to pick one of the random files already slide on the SD card to confirm everything is running correctly. You don't need to complete the print, just check if a printer homing and printing as they supposed to be. If everything goes okay, you are good to go. You can print whatever you want and enjoy your day. Generally, the model people talk about is a three-dimensional file and with STL or 3MF. You can download those files from file website like Printable or MakerWell. Software turns the 3D file into a G-code file that your printer could recognize is called a slicer. G-code file will tell your printer when and where to pull the filament and achieve some other features. Let's assume that you already download Bamboo Lab Studio Slicer. If you want to set a file wirelessly to your printer, you need to accept the turn and download a cloud add-on and enable the wireless sending file feature. You will also need to log on your Bamboo Lab account on the Bamboo Lab Studio Slicer. The general workflow for Slicer is first import a 3D model into the Slicer, change the model orientation if necessary, select or change your film setting and other print settings, slice the model, send the file to the printer, and you are good to go. Before you follow the general workflow, you need to add your printer to the slicer from here. Also adding a filament from this area. If you want to print multicolor at one part, you can add more filaments and paint the model to your preference. Follow the general workflow, select settings, slice the model, and send it to the printer. Make sure you pick the correct color to match your filament. This is it guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'm happy printing.